Hi there, my name is Memo. This is my channel, House Planty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see it behind me, it's tropical house plants. So today's going to be an exciting unboxing. I haven't done an unboxing from this company ever before, which is surprising because I have actually bought from them at an event. So the unboxing, as hopefully the title will say, is for an order that I placed recently with Grow Tropicals. And I really wanted to see, because I've had really good experiences with the plants that I picked up from the Grow Tropicals event quite a few months ago, which I was part of the panel that they were organizing up in Leeds. I'll put the panel video at the top there if you want to see if you haven't already seen that. But yeah, I thought let's place an order and yeah, get some interesting plants. And this time around, I thought I would challenge myself and not go for the really obvious kind of philodendrons, anthurums. There are a few in there, but there's also a few wild cards, which I thought might be interesting to A, grow and B, show you as well. Majority of the plants that I got were actually relatively affordable, if I'm not mistaken. I will see about adding prices and clips, close-ups and things like that, like I did with my Equigenera order up throughout the video. But yeah, Everything went really well. The order process online was really straightforward. It was really easy for me to find plants on the website as well. And I think it was because I saw a recent restock. There was, <laughs> they had some amazing, uh, I think, seed grown Spiritus Sancti. Not, don't have that kind of budget just yet, although they are, they are considerably cheaper than what you would have potentially got for a similar size plant even two or three years ago. So <laughs> I just didn't have the budget this time around. Hopefully I might come across them again in the future and I might have the budget then to buy. However, yeah, as I said, all went really well. Got the delivery a few minutes ago. Very excited, sat down to film. There might be a bit of an issue, not necessarily Grow Tropical's fault. I think this might have been a bit of a mishap with DPD the delivery service because I've got two boxes hold on I will show you the boxes so there's one box there and there is another larger box here which is impressive because I thought most of the plants that I got were relatively small however I didn't realize until I was sitting down to film that one of the boxes says one of three the other box says two of three can you see where this is going I don't know if there is a three of three, but if there is, I haven't got one yet. So <laughs> I went onto the GBT website to see if I can find a way of contacting them. It's not seeming particularly easy right now. I will film this for the two boxes that I have, and I will reach out to hopefully either DPD or the guys directly at Great Tropicals, and I'm sure that they'll solve whatever issue it is hopefully quite quickly. I'm sure they will. Um, and if it is, I will probably add the third boxes unboxing onto this video before I post it. So hopefully you should have all of the unboxings. So one of the things that I will say is boxes are a lot larger than I thought they were going to be. I thought most of the plants that I was going to be getting were going to be relatively juvenile plants. I don't know if that's the case, but let's discover together, shall we? Right, shall I go? I think I'll go for the, the, the long box first and I will try to do the cutting off screen because I think YouTube might have issues with that. Okay, so the first box is open and I'm trying to see and I've got a handy dandy list that I will bring closer to myself because half of these plants I probably will butcher the name. I will say this up front because again, plants that I'm not used to seeing or having basically so bear with me so first off i will say packaging seems relatively sturdy so box is well packed there is oh i do like it when things are packed really well so this is the first plant let me put the box down without decapitating all of my other plants and so the material that they've used, I don't know how to describe it, is kind of like a polystyrene film, I think. And love a good bit of duct tape around just to make sure that everything is sturdy. So I will be cutting again off camera. But yeah, so unwrapping, 
I don't know whether or not this is a fleecy material, fleecy. I'm assuming it's a bit warmer than they would. I don't know whether or not this would happen in the warmer months, but obviously I ordered in the slightly cooler months. I think this is just the one plant. I have a very sneaky suspicion that that <laughs> box three of three should have been here potentially. But let's have a look. So corrugated kind of cardboard for the eagle eye amongst yourself. You might have already been able to spot what this plant is. So let me get the rest of this off. Anybody else get the thing where like, yeah, that tape gets everywhere. Like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Doing a lot of sound and I'm not showing you. This is a lot larger than I thought it was gonna be. I thought this was it's meant to be a bit smaller. Oh, and it's attached. And I'll show you the plant and I'll show you how it's attached as well. This is a schismatoglossus. And I'll put the proper name, the full name up at the top there. And I've never had one of these before. Oh, there's a second baby plant in here as well. And can you spot the little baby plant right there in the corner? That is a philodendron white wizard. Now, schismatoglossus I've never had before and I definitely wanted to trial it. But sorry, just to show you the packaging again, the pot and it's attached with duct tape to the actual kind of corrugated cardboard kind of behind it. But let me detach these and we can keep talking about the plants. All right, so we're doing good. We've got two of the... Eight plants. So two of the eight plants are here, which is good. So I do like a good duct tape around the pots as well because it kind of keeps the soil and everything else in there. I know people might be looking at me and I'll bring it in a bit closer so you can actually see that is the um, white wizard. And I do have the white princess, but I don't have the white wizard or the white knight. To be fair, if I would have found a baby white knight, I would have got that as well. And then I've got the complete set. Yes, I know they can be quite similar to each other. I did a bit more research when I was purchasing the white wizard and the reason why I wanted the white wizard and if I'm not mistaken this is true for the white wizard rather than the white knight yes it doesn't have the white on the petioles and if I bring it in a bit closer you might be able if it stops focusing on me you might be able to see that the petioles haven't got that white stripe that the white knight does have however Apparently the white wizard's leaves, A, it grows faster than the white knight, and B, the leaves can get larger. So I thought this might be an interesting one to see. And I think both the white wizard and the white knight are kind of climbing or vining um, philodendrons. The white princess, which is behind me here, you probably won't be able to see it. If I bring it down a leaf, you can kind of see the leaf there. That is self-heading, so it will keep growing upright. And true, it is self-heading. It kind of grows in a columnar form. Always my luck as well. I forgot to mention this. I had this last time when I was ordering from Expo Genera. The weather has been unseasonably warm or kind of mild for this time of the year. Today is the first day where it's starting to get really cold. So when I bought these boxes in, they were both freezing. But hopefully... The benefit of being able to buy locally, at least within the UK, rather than having to import them in, I got a notification yesterday saying that these were sent yesterday and they've arrived today and they've arrived kind of before lunch as well. So they weren't really in the post for too long. And I do appreciate a company that does use somebody like DPD because generally, I mean, ignore the potentially I'm missing one parcel. <laughs> so first time it's actually ever happened to me with DPD, to be fair. But it is generally that they're, they're quite good at kind of bringing stuff and it all being okay and relatively in kind of good condition. So I'm, I'm hopeful that there wasn't going to be, there isn't going to be much of coal damage, but let me keep unpacking and I will come back. All right. And this one is now fully free of its packaging. I put it in front of my face so it focuses on it and not me. Looking good. So let's move on to the schismatoglossus. So interestingly enough, 
And again, a reason why I kind of wanted to get this specific plant is, again, the name kind of harkens to Greek terminology. So schisma usually means rip or tear, and glossa or glossus means tongue. So obviously, the, the t- <laughs> I would imagine the tongue is to do with the shape of the leaf, and maybe the schisma is the fact that looking at it, it's almost, so if you're looking at the midrib, I think it's the midrib of the leaf, so the kind of middle part of the leaf, these two sides look like mirror opposites. So it's kind of like split down the middle. I really like this. And I've been looking at these plants for a while. I literally thought this was going to be a third of the size of this. So massively impressed. There is a few new growth points. And as I can see from the inside of the plant, and as I said, I've never had schismatoglossus before, there's multiple growth points in the pot. So I have got very high hopes for this. This might be an interesting one to have a look and see how it grows. Yes, very well packaged. And I do also love the fact that there are tissue papers around the crown of the plants just to make sure that none of the soil comes out. I keep trying to like not cover myself whilst I'm talking to you and doing this. But as people have been here for a while, things are going on the floor right now and they're going to get picked up later. All right, there we go. Very, very cool plant. Let me put this down somewhere and let's continue. Uh, interestingly, I went back into that box to see if there was any other plants. There wasn't, but there is a heat pack. And I love the fact that the heat pack is also wrapped up in that kind of corrugated cardboard, which I'm assuming is so that it doesn't really touch any of the plants, so that doesn't get any kind of burns on the plant. Very, very cool. Very, very, very cool. Considering as well that I didn't order a heat pack. I don't know if you was. I don't know if there's even an option to order a heat pack on uh, their kind of website, but very, very cool that this came included because I'm cold. So one box down, second one to go. I do have a sneaky suspicion that I might be missing a box because I've only got two plants out of that one box. So let's have a look, shall we? Right. The other box is done in a really interesting way, and I like when they do this. So it's essentially, I don't know if that's going to pick up on the camera. It's one box inside another box. Maybe that's the one that I'm missing. I doubt it is, but let's have a look. How, how do I disengage possibly this way around? Ah, yes. I did it. loads of paper packaging which is quite cool because obviously a it can be quite insulating and b it's just good to kind of keep the plants from bashing around these are all very big there's more of these like mahusiv parcels and i think let me just double check lovely little hot like heat pack so that's quite cool so let me Open this as well. Similar packaging again. It's that, I don't know what it's called, like polystyrene, is it? Kind of a sheet, really, but really, really cool. Really, really cool. I like it. Generally speaking, I find that the more you struggle to get into things, the more secure they tend to be. So this is a good sign. I'm also not great with like, being especially aware of what I'm doing. So let's have a look. Oh, so much packaging. But at least the plants are safe. I mean, it's really tricky because, and I've said this on other videos, when it comes to retailers, and they do try their best, obviously, to kind of package up plants. And there's a lot of discourse that I'm seeing online, predominantly of kind of either people sometimes complaining about the state that the plants are going to get to them, it's a plant, it's a living thing, there's going to be cuts, bruises, cosmetic damage. With the best intentions with all of this packaging, it's still likely to have maybe some issues because it's going in the post or couriers or all these things. So I've seen a lot of retailers who solve this and they do great packaging. And then usually the other complaint is, but it's, it's not sustainable. And it, like they will try to do the most that they can. Most businesses are quite ethical in that way. So 
I think collectively we could all cut them some slack, basically. They are trying to do, and they don't ever kind of stop trying to improve. A lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them. Oh, this is something that I've been looking at for a while. And this is a uh, Thematophyllum sprucianum. I don't know if I can pronounce it. And I've been wanting one of these for a long time. I think this was also sometimes called the Philodendron Goldieye. And you know who you are. We've always been talking about your one on Instagram in the States. Look, I finally got one. <laughs> and I wanted it. I think there was an option to get one that was maybe potentially larger, I think. But I wanted it a bit smaller because I know this can get really large. And I'm, <laughs> I need to see where I'm going to put it in my space. This is already too big for my space. But... I'm kind of really comfortable with this. I will see if I can get a mature image and put it on here because it's really interesting how the leaves grow. But let me finish unpacking, similar kind of setup as the previous one. Let me finish unboxing this bit at least and then I can bring you in for some close-ups as well. Wunderbar, it is now free from its little baggie. I'm pretty sure this is in direct Kekokwar. So I learned my lesson last time. I will leave them to settle for a couple of weeks before I change their growing media to what I would normally grow this in. But you can kind of see the leaves there. And this is part of the reason why I've got it. These are still quite immature leaves. There is a new leaf. I'm trying to like not snap it. There's maybe a tiny bit of cosmetic damage. But again, you can expect this because nobody can tell me that the individual to pack this didn't pack this with care. They spent a lot of time trying to package this properly. Things like this are going to happen. And um, I'm trying to see now, you can see that one leaf there, it kind of almost looks a bit kind of trilobal, a bit like some syngoniums. This is a more immature leaf here. So you can kind of see this is another one that kind of transforms the more mature it gets. And I'm trying to show you this here. There is one, two, three, four, five kind of almost leaflets on the one leaf. I think each one of these is a leaf in itself, but it just kind of splits out. And the mature form, and hopefully I will find a picture to put it here, is quite impressive because it gets like a much larger ring and there's even more little leaflets that go around. Very cool and unusual. And you know me, I like weird plants. Definitely one of the weird plants. I love it. Next one is a heavy one. Potentially there's two pots in this. Yeah. And annoyingly, I think the one that might have not have arrived, if it hasn't, I might be jumping the gun because we've seen one, two, three plants of the eight so far. I somehow doubt that there's five plants in here. I might be wrong. I don't know, but let's have a look. It's all so heavy. I think I've got the big plants in here. Let's let's have a look. Ooh, yes. Yes, so I'm I'm most definitely missing a package, I think. I'll I'll get on to the team at Grow Tropicals and see if they can track it down from uh the DPD people. So these are two plants that I have never come across before. One is an anthurium, so this is an anthurium. Oh, and it's got a little inflorescence as well. I thought it is kind of really cool, kind of almost cup-shaped leaves. And it does this, I think, as standard. And let me just have, remind myself which one this is. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that name. I'm going to put it up here and you can read it yourselves. Because, <laughs> <laughs> But the other one is kind of an interesting one that you don't see very often. And that's why I decided to get it. And I'll show you close-ups in just a minute. This, if I'm not mistaken, is... The Raphidophora hongkongensis, I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm assuming it, it kind of happens around Hong Kong, so that's where it gets its name. But let me unpack this and bring them up for a bit of a closer look. They are finally free. Right. So let me free them completely, and I will be with you in just a minute. Lovely. So this one looks really, really interesting. It's kind of paddly leaves. I don't think 
it gets any form of fenestrations. And I think probably why that many people don't have it in its collect in their collection. But to me, this really because it is also tickly kind of succulent foliage. Like you can see what the growing stems look like as well. These are very cool because for me this does kind of scream very jungly because of the way that it's kind of set up. It kind of reminds me of something that would be creeping along the kind of the floor of a jungle or going up a tree up a tree. This is very, very cool. So I was very, very excited to find that they had this one available. Moving on to the Anthurium now. And I'm actually massively impressed with this Anthurium. I didn't know what to expect, but the pictures looked really cool. And I think I'm going to like it because it feels like it's going to be growing very compactly and up rather than very sprawly, which a lot of my other Anthuriums are, and I don't have the space. So let me free it from its shackles and I will show you. Oh, some chunky roots on this one. I like it. Uh, this is most definitely at some point going to get repotted into um, the Soil Ninja's coarse semi hydro mix. I always have to think about it, but yes, very, very cool. So let me bring it in so you can kind of see the foliage. Can you see the kind of cupping that is happening there? It looks really, really, really cool. And it's happening on all of the leaves. And I don't think this is to do with packaging. I think this is how the leaves drop with this one. And you would imagine it's probably to help funnel. Yes, it's very, very cool. I'll see if I can, maybe I'll get some clips and close-ups and show you. But it kind of looks almost like a little cup. So the rain will fall into it. There's a little channel on the actual petiole itself that leads to the crown of the stem. So I'm wondering whether or not this would naturally be growing somewhere where it doesn't get that much rain or whether or not it needs a lot of rain or a lot of water. So it kind of helps that kind of drain into there. Very, very, very unusual, very cool. I mean, the inflorescence is relatively insignificant as you'd get with most of the kind of foliage and theriums. But very cool nonetheless. Yeah, and I think I realize now where the third package might be. It's probably quite a small package because I think all the smaller items, which I'm really hoping they're not that sensitive. I don't know, looking at a couple of them, whether or not they are, that they don't stay in for too, too long. But uh, yeah, that might be quite cool. Hopefully, I will have an extra little clip to add into this video as well, and you should be seeing everything together. And welcome to day two of unboxing. Because <laughs> hopefully the earlier bit of the video explained, meant to have three packages, only got two packages. I did get the third package a day later. The team at Grove Tropicals was really helpful, as was the team at DPD, and the parcel was tracked. It was just still at the warehouse. Let's see, I have received it today. So it has sat in the box for an extra couple of hours, depending on when the video will come out. This was filmed after a very special visit to a very special location, depending again whether or not this video has come up before or after that, you'll know what I'm talking about. But without further ado, let's look at the rest of the plants. New box and box three of three. So yes, it did arrive in the end. So I'm kind of really excited about it. I'm not going to lie, I'm also a bit worried because I think the plants that are in this box, unfortunately, kind of dumb luck. This could have happened at any time to anybody. Um, I think these are the slightly more sensitive ones or the slightly smaller ones. But hopefully if it was as well packaged and same great packaging from Grow Tropicals. So I'm hopeful that everything will be as pristine as it can possibly be. And yes, there is a heat pack and it's just about warm as well. So that is quite good because obviously that would have helped on the fact that it had to stay for an extra day in transit essentially just the one package but it should have a few plants in here actually so let's have a look this was kind of what i was expecting some of the other plants so i was pleasantly surprised with the size of some of the other plants because i was expecting them to be a bit smaller so let's have a look at these slightly smaller plants 
Great packaging again. We've got the corrugated cardboard. Let's have a look. And just a whole bunch of duct tape, which is fine by me because it keeps, oh, it keeps everything happy. Ooh, things seem happy. There's a couple of plants in here that I was a bit worried about, but they seem okay. So let me quickly give you a glance of the three plants that are in here and let me bring them out one by one and talk you through what each one is. I'll start with the one that more people might be aware of. And um, this is a plant, I'm not gonna lie, I did actually manage to get this plant a while back from another retailer. And the retailer was very good actually. At that point, they did come over to me and say, look, we've had a bit of a delay with your order. A lot of these plants went out. Unfortunately, the last one that was left, which is gonna be for you, we were trying to keep the biggest one kind of back for you so you can have a slightly bigger specimen. I told them it obviously wasn't necessary. I actually prefer them when they're slightly smaller because I have no space. But yeah, they, they were saying, look, it's really not doing very well at the moment. We would rather not send it to you. We can either give you a refund or we can give you another plant. I said, you know what? I'll take the risk. I know that this plant can be a bit fussy at times. Let me see if I can keep it happy and if I can nurse it back to health. Uh, Spoiler, I couldn't. So this is, I'm gonna bring it a bit closer so you can see, the Alocasia Jacqueline. So I think it's the Jacqueline if I'm not mistaken. Yes, Alocasia species Jacqueline. So smaller specimen than the one that I had last time. I'm okay with that. And considering that there is a new leaf that didn't really get too much damage in the cold, and you can see why we're saying these are probably not the ones that could have done with being in an extra day of transit. The Raphidophora that we saw before because it's quite thick and suckling and all these things, that probably could have been okay for another day. But this one I'm still a bit worried about. I am sure it is fine. The team's kind of growing media is spectacular. So looking forward to growing this out happily. This was my kind of one last attempt to see, look, can I keep this plant happy? So Alocasia Jacqueline. Now we're starting to go into not only plants that most of us haven't seen before, but also kind of genera that potentially most people aren't going to be aware of. But these are more, not necessarily challenged, but plants that I kind of, you know, I do want to challenge myself with both of these plants, actually. So the first one, and let me unpackage. This is an interesting one because I've never had one of these before. Wow, the petioles on these leaves are kind of cool. And actually the leaves, ooh, the leaves have got, I will do close-up clips because this is quite small. So I don't know whether or not it's going to come up on screen too, too much. You might be able to see some of the zebra striping and you might be able to see some of that polka dotting as well on the leaves. This is a Dremiopsis maculata. So Dremiopsis, so opsis is a sight or a vision in Greek, basically, or yeah. So dreamy, there's probably some form of ancient Greek word that's very easy to kind of understand why it's called that. I will see if I can find it and I will add it somewhere at the top. But this is something, so I don't see a lot of people talk about dreamyopsis before. And I think this is going to be an interesting one to grow based on everything that I was seeing. I'm kind of looking at it now. It's kind of slightly bulbiferous, kind of in the soil. I don't know whether or not that's going to pick up. I'll see if I can get some clips. But very, very cool. I am really looking forward to growing this. And it's interesting how it grows because it grows on kind of relatively long petioles and it opens up a leaf almost kind of looks tulip-esque. So it kind of looks like it's kind of a slight cupping. Very, very cool. And the next one, if I'm not mistaken, is a type of orchid. So this is the orchid. And I bet you haven't seen many orchids that look like this. I got it because it looks a bit like grass. And I wanted something that was kind of more diminutive as an orchid, because I know some of these are really coming into the market at the moment. And this is a 
Plevrothalis ruskifolia. I'm looking down because I've got the names, because obviously I'm not going to remember that off the top of my head, but I will put the names at the top as well. This is exceptionally cool. I've never seen one of these before, and I like the fact that very much like an orchid, and hopefully that will pick up, but again, I'll see if I can add some clips. You might be able to see it does the real kind of orchid thing where there's roots everywhere and it's over and everything, and it's, oh, I love things like this. And um, so this isn't one that I'm going to be repotting anytime soon. It looks like it's got an awful lot of roots in there. I definitely want to do a lot more research on this plant and see before I do any drastic changes to it. I think it if it's anything like some of my other orchids. They do hate to say the word that some plants like to be root bound and to kind of have constricted roots because most plants, if they could, probably they wouldn't necessarily want that. They'd, have, they'd want to have kind of wider roots going everywhere. But I do think with some of these aroids and some of these orchids that are growing in nooks and crannies of kind of plants and trees and things like that, they're kind of used to kind of maximizing as much space as they possibly can. It probably also means that the soil is, is going to be a bit less moisture retentive, so less likely to have some root rot. The leaves, very much like most orchids, are slightly on the succulent side. There is something on the underside of the leaves. I think this may have bloomed as well at some point. I think it kind of blooms off the side of the leaf, and I don't know whether or not that's going to pick up. You can maybe see that a bit there. But very, very, very cool. And so these are, and actually even the Jacqueline as well is a different looking plant. These are the ones that I was getting really excited about because I'm just like, I have never tried a hand at some of these plants. Most of the plants in this order, and hopefully I would probably would have put pricing everywhere. Uh, most of them weren't particularly pricey. So really good experience with for tropical. As I mentioned at the very beginning of the video, I have purchased from them before, and I still love all the, pro the products, the plants that I got from that plant event that was happening up in Leeds, but I really wanted to experience what it's like to get a delivery from them. And I'm not holding it against them what happened with the delivery driver side of things. That could have happened with any delivery. It was just unfortunate that it was this one. They handled it brilliantly. DPD handled it brilliantly as well. It's fine. Things like this happen. And the plants seem to be completely fine. Obviously, these three I'll just keep a better, kind of a closer eye on in the next couple of days, but they're not showing any kind of outward signs of any real issues, so they should be fine. Fantastic plants, great service, great packaging, and good experience overall. And yeah, like overall, thumbs up from me. But yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed slightly frenetic kind of two-party kind of, I'll put it all into one video, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this. I know unboxing videos aren't for everybody, but I know a lot of people do appreciate unboxing. So I try to keep everybody happy. And at the end of the day, I get a bit excited. I haven't done a lot of kind of plant purchasing for a while. So which is why I'm maybe going a bit hammer and tongs at the moment. But yes, hopefully you've all enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon and I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.